We're gonna look next, go next. So now you have like a little bit of history about algorithms. So what are the, what are the required resources to run an algorithm successfully? Where does an algorithm live? What are the resources you guys use to run an algorithm? So simple. Memory space, you're using a computer. Okay, so you have like a memory space. What else? You need a set of data. Data, that's to run the algorithm. Okay, so but what to create an algorithm that runs, you need a computer. So a computer has space, but also you need to run it in time, right? So you need two things, time and space. So let's write it here. So you have time, but you also have space. So if your algorithm takes, let's say, if your algorithm lives in this quadrant and also maybe in this quadrant, which one is better? Is it the green one or the red one? The green one, right, of course. So it takes a little time and a little space. So these are the, the best algorithms. So if you design algorithms that can take a little time and a little space, that's very good. If they can take uh, a lot of time and a lot of space, that's too bad. If they can take, for example, let's say, uh, in between, something in between. So maybe they can take well, like some time, they're quite okay, some space. So this is maybe quite a reasonable solution. So that's probably, let's say, okay, right? So here, what we want to study in this uh, uh, course is like to how to design very good algorithms, if possible, okay? The ones that live in the green quadrant, okay? And avoid those that are here. You don't want to design, as an engineer, you don't want to design algorithms uh, that live in this space, okay? So, uh, right, so what do you need? Let's just summarize. So basically, you need uh, some RM, so you need just a memory space to complete your algorithm. Uh, if you're living in that space, you will get, if your algorithm is good, uh, you will get the algorithm output in a blink of an eye, which means, you know, it runs so fast. But if your algorithm is too slow, it takes a lot of memory, a lot of space, then it might, you know, like in terms of memory, your stack might be overflown. So you might not even be able to run the load the data, right? If you're like, your RM is too, uh, uh, like you have a little uh, memory space, you might be able like you have like billions of you know tetrabytes and your uh your 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 algorithm needs uh, a lot of space and your computer doesn't allow it you cannot even run it okay so also if the running takes a lot of time you might not be able to complete it in your lifetime so this is too bad now uh in this course we're going to learn about these so how can we quantify measure mathematically formalized compute these quantities now it's like i know that there are algorithms that live you know here or like in this space right but i need to learn how to quantify them so we will learn about time complexity of an algorithm and a little bit about space complexity but we will mainly focus on time complexity okay so time complexity of an algorithm is the amount of time it needs to run to completion and space complexity is just you know the amount of memory the algorithm needs to run to completion too okay so so far, so good. So let's remember why we, you guys are here. Just to recall a few things. Uh, an algorithm, uh, how to design an algorithm. So in this course, we'll learn how to create an algorithm uh, like for different problems. But algorithm creation is like an art. It's something you need to engage with. It's something you need to think about, right? Like, you know, you might find uh, a first algorithm, then it, or it doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, computationally efficient. You want to make it faster, right? So designing and creating algorithm is uh, very important. How to validate and verify an algorithm. So we will see that we'll, there are, like, as I mentioned, there are ways of proving the correctness of an algorithm, validating it uh, no matter what the input is. So this is something to think about. Is your solution correct? Does the output of your algorithm correct? Also, the thing that we will focus on in this course is how to analyze algorithms, how to analyze the performance of an algorithm in terms of time and storage. So this is, you know, I would say, 
this is uh, one of the main focuses of this course. There's another thing. So after you guys, if you want to uh, become better at programming algorithms and testing them, there is a whole field called, you know, algorithm testing, debugging and profiling. So debugging an algorithm, also profiling, it means uh, it's the process of executing the correct algorithm on different data sets and measuring the time and the space. So we're going to do a little bit of profiling during this course. Uh, but mainly uh, trying to analyze these algorithms and learn how they work. Okay, great. So what are we going to do? Let's, you know, look at these two and then we're going to have like a short break. So the last part is basically looking at the behavior of an algorithm. So we saw so far that an algorithm lives in space and time. Uh, we need to know that the algorithm is efficient or not. And to do that, we have, we have some tools in computer science to analyze algorithms and study their behavior, okay? So, so far we have seen that the TSP, uh, we can find a correct solution, but the correct solution is not efficient, right? Because it's in the factorial, it has a, um, a factorial uh, running time, which is not good. And there is another thing that I would like you guys to uh, remember. So here, just as a revision, so factorial basically counts the number, uh, the permutations of a sequence with no repetitions allowed. But there is also an, the exponential function. So these are two things that you need to uh, remember when we talk about algorithms and their time complexities or time uh, behavioral patterns. So what is exponential? Exponential basically it's, uh, it counts the number of combinations of a set. So we have A, B, C and repetitions are allowed. So repetitions are allowed it means like here we can go we can have like A, B, B. Okay so we can have repetitions. So what do you guys think? Do you think like exponential is worse, like it takes more time, or factorial? So exponential of fn, you can have any constant. This can be uh, any number, so let me write it down. So for example, if c is equal to 2, then f of n is 2 exponent n, okay? So this is exponent, uh, ex, ex, uh, how do you say expun? How oh, I forgot what it's called. Exponentiation. Yeah, exponentiation. So here, um, in this one, the exponential function it takes a lot of time. But let's compare these two. So the exponential, the exponential function, um, f n equals c uh, exponent n for a given constant c greater than one, is basically uh, enumerating all subsets of n items, while the factorial function it generates all permutations or orderings of n items. And when it, times, when it comes to complexity, let's look at these two functions. So here we have the exponential and here we have the factorial. What do you guys think if we plot these two functions for different n? Which one grows faster? The factorial, right? The factorial grows faster because you, you can see right here you have like a larger number. So in the beginning, if we're just going to draw these, plot these functions, we're going to have exponential like this, like uh, let's say, sorry, factorial function and then exponential <laughs> slightly lower, right? So this grows much faster, okay, this one. So it grows much faster, is a ma much faster means when n tends to plus infinity, you're going to have like very like larger numbers. So here it will take like bigger numbers, larger numbers than this one, okay? And you can know this from these guys right there. Uh, so the uh, function here, the uh, factorial function grows much faster than the uh, exponential function but these two are too fast. So if you're gonna have an algorithm, you don't want its time complexity to be either in these, you know, to be exponential or factorial because otherwise you're gonna wait for a long time if you have lots of points. Great, so here, uh, just to sum up, so factorial, basically, just something to remember, factorial tells us about the number of permutations of n objects, okay, and the order matters with no repetition while exponential function tells us about the number of permutations where the order matters and repetitions are allowed. And something to remember is that the factorial function grows much faster 
than the exponential function. Okay, so let's have a five minute break and then we're going to hit the last part of this uh, lecture. <laughs>